earthquakes occur, they can cause damage to all or some of the spheres on Earth, including the lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere. In this part, we will only talk about the impacts of earthquakes on lithosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere. When one of the spheres is affected, then at least one or more of the others will be affected as well, as they all work together. For example, when ground breakage occurs in the lithosphere, it creates lakes in the hydrosphere. The lithosphere is the rocky outer part of the Earth. It always moves, but very slowly. When an earthquake occurs, the lithosphere becomes shaky and the earthquake creates ground rupture, landslides, avalanches, fires, destruction of forests and severe building damage. There are more tsunamis in the Pacific Ocean than any other. So in 2004, the world was taken by surprise when one of the largest recorded tsunamis of all time took place in the Indian Ocean. On December 26, 2004, Indonesia was rocked by the second largest recorded earthquake ever, 9.2 on the Richter scale. Minutes later, a 90-foot tsunami slammed into the Southeast Asian coastline. Two hundred twenty-five thousand men, women, and children lost their lives. Although the Earth may seem to be a solid sphere, beneath the oceans and continents it is divided into eight major and many minor segments known as tectonic plates. Where they meet, they can grind and jostle against each other at fault lines, causing earthquakes. Geologists had long thought that the Cascadia fault line was incapable of generating a major quake. But Atwater's investigation has proved that it was highly active. The big worry for Atwater and the thousands of people who live in this region is that the Cascadia fault line bears an uncanny resemblance to another highly active fault line, the Sunda Megathrust. It was an earthquake along this fault that was responsible for the Indian Ocean tsunami that killed nearly a quarter of a million people. Where we get two tectonic plates coming together, such as in the case of the Indonesian tsunami in 2004, one plate pushes it beneath the other plate and creates lots and lots of friction and tension and drags the upper plate down with it. And that process can take hundreds of years, even thousands of years. It's a very slow process. But eventually, the pressure of this one trying to push back up again wins, and it flips like that. And that creates a mega thrust, a sudden movement of the seabed. And that's what creates a phenomenal thing. The part of the Earth crust, waters and atmosphere that supports life and the ecosystem comprising the entire Earth and the living organisms that inhabit it. The intense shaking of the Earth's surface causes damage or loss of human and animal life. Earthquakes themselves do not kill or harm life, it's when structures or certain flora collapse. The creation of new springs and lakes created by ground breakage alters the surrounding environment. 
this potential for flooding, changes in the food chain and can cause changes in animal behaviour in the area affected. In the long run, this can lead to new species being formed or the extinction of modern species. Landslides release pathogenic microbes into the atmosphere, impacting on human and animal health. This can have a devastating effect such as becoming an epidemic or wiping out a species. Both situations lead to further alteration in the biosphere.